Okay, we're going to tie a fly called a brown owl. It was originated by Bob Broad of Errol, New Hampshire. And it may look like a streamer, but it's actually a stonefly dry. It was designed to imitate, imitate a stonefly that has been blown into the water and is struggling in the surface film. The thread starts quite a way back from the eye and you should wrap an underbody all the way to the uh, start of the bend. Trim off that tag end and grab some medium gold tinsel for the body. And you prepare the gold tinsel by uh, exposing the core using your thumbnail to just strip some of that oval tinsel away and then wrap down into the bend because Bob's instructions say to make sure that the, the oval tinsel goes down part way into the bend of the hook. Now as this tinsel wraps forward, watch it comes and pushes that bobbin right forward and the bobbin stays right with the tinsel all the way. It won't do that if you don't push the bobbin tube tight up against the hook shank. Now this is a quarter inch gap and I, I illustrate it to uh, make sure that I've got my thread in the middle of that quarter inch space. It's fairly important. This is another fly I tied earlier and I'm showing you just uh, how Bob instructed the uh, body to be built and that is built and then glued. And then you see this hair here, I cut away a bunch of curved hair to get this straight hollow hair earlier and then found out that this curved hair is really what I wanted and I dumped and threw away a bunch of it. But Bob insists that this is the hair to use in the instructions uh, uh, that he provided for this fly. Now you hand stack this hair and roll it around a little bit so all those curves go in different directions and uh, clean out the uh, fluff from the uh, butt ends like that and secure this tightly to the shank right from that point where it was hanging with about 10 tight wraps and then trim all those end butt pieces off building a little bit of a taper there and then we're going to cement this again per Bob's instructions. The instructions for this fly came from the United Fly Tires Round Table edition 173 uh, from an article that Bob wrote and, and supplied to the magazine. So these are the proper instructions for this fly. Now you, you see I've got a little bit more space before I get back to the quarter inch tie-in point for the hackle and I'm going to use that to make soft wraps, gather this hair and make soft wraps going back and it kind of arrests all this flyaway hair and uh, brings it in a little bit so our wings will lay flat on top. And once it's on there, make sure and squeeze it down around the uh, sides. Make sure that it is the top and both sides covered where the, and the uh, middle and the bottom is open. If you got that done, the uh, feathers for this are two uh, teal flank feathers and watch this stem, see how this bends and breaks. You've got to get a feather long enough so that you can get to the tie-in point and have the tie-in point be in a flexible part of this stem. One more try here and there, see how that bounces back? Anywhere from there on you can tie this feather stem in, but if you tie on that part that breaks, the hollow part of the stem, it, your fly won't last. So I size this, uh, I strip away the fluff and size this to the hook. Let me grab another hackle here and prepare it because there are two and I'm using the wider one on top, the narrower one on the bottom. Two of the same size is perfect if you got it. I make a few loose wraps on this so I can pull it in. See how I pulled it in and tented it down over the uh, body of the fly. Now trim those stems off, build this head up a little bit and get ready for the hackle. It's just a plain grizzly soft hackle, but the length is uh, critical. I want the length to be from the tie-in point to the hook point. So I use my scissor points to measure that uh, against the hackle barb lengths, and then prepare that tip, and then again, glue. Bob was very, uh, very adamant that this should be glued at almost every step because it gets hit hard and brings in big fish. So. Uh, I've tied this in, I'll roll this over, grab my hackle plies and start wrapping and uh, that's a whole quarter inch of area you've got to wrap there so these wraps can't be tied up against each other unless you're fortunate enough to have wet 
fly hackle that's really long. So I'm spacing these out a little bit and I'm about to be reminded of the uh, thing where you have to keep the bobbin above the hook shank when you come up from underneath like I just did and so I didn't and it came loose and I'll, uh, I'll come up from underneath with the bobbin on the next step here and I'll keep the tip of the bobbin up above the hook shank uh, so that I can tie off this feather and not lose it a second time. So here it comes, come up close, bring that underneath, trap that stem and hold the bobbin point above the hook shank. Then I can reach in, I got my hackle pliers off now, I can reach in, grab that stem and hold it and go ahead and tie it off. Should have done it that way the first time. So with that tied off and trimmed, I'm going to build up a head here and trim the hackle off the top. He specifically says that the hackle should be cut away from the top and that it should be trimmed very close, just short stubs. Uh, coincidentally, when I wrap this hackle, the, the second or third wrap is right where there's a black spot, so it looks like there's a big gap in the wraps, but there isn't. That center section actually has a black section of the grizzly quill and fibers sticking up. He specifically says to cut it short so there are just little stubbies sticking up. And then he says, go fish this fly and hang on when you swing it and skitter it and float it through some water. There you have the brown owl tied using rotary fly tying techniques.